Hey, Pastor Sam here with your report from Uruguay. Right here is Buenos Aires. Right here is Brazil. All of this is the very small nation of Uruguay. Some interesting things have happened there. Today, the Italian mobster escaped. Rocco Morabito wanted in Italy for racketeering, drug trafficking, etc., etc. He had fled and hid out in South America. What's interesting is that this reminds me of the case of Cesare Battisti. Now, this guy was on the run in South America for years and years, and then the new president, Jair Bolsonaro, took over, and he sent this, had this guy arrested and sent him straight back to Italy, extradited him on the 12th day of his presidency. So here's the deal. South America is ceasing to be a domain for criminals, drug traffickers, and a haven for them. And that's what Jair Bolsonaro said when he extradited this fellow, Cesare Battisti. Now, Cesare Battisti was part of the Red Brigades. He was part of an autonomous Marxist group. He was a terrorist and probably a narco-terrorist and was involved in acts of violence. Moving over to Rocco Morabito with today's news, this is just more about drugs. Here's the deal. These kind of crooks have had friends in the presidencies and in the governments of South America, going all the way back to Adolf Hitler himself, who had a warm welcome in Argentina and with Juan Perón. Juan Perón was the president. Now there's the movement, the Peronist Peronist movement that's trying to wrest control of the government of Argentina back. And their crook, Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner, who's just going by part of her name this time, but she's a crook. She's she's good friends with Hillary Clinton. She wanted to attack the Falklands in a very Soviet attempt to prop up their failing economy and their failing pensions and socialist policies with war and she'll do it again but here's the deal she is under prosecution and she's trying to campaign for president and we don't know at this point who's going to win so today when Rocco Morabito is in the news for escaping from prison the same thing that El Chapo did see he paid off the president of Mexico all oh, that's out of the open now from the El Chapo trial he paid EPN Enrique Peña Nieto, $100 million to protect him and his cartels. That's how Chapo escaped from prison twice in Mexico. Well, he'll never see daylight again since he's in prison in the United States and Trump has flatly and soundly defeated El Chapo. But now, in the rest of the world, this kind of stuff is still going on. Uruguay, just so you know, it's kind of a carnival uh, nation. Catholicism is very strong there. It's always been a banana republic. Um, Wars have started there. In fact, I've got a whole video that you can watch after this. Uh, I'll try to link them together. It's Migrant Caravan Call-In, and it talks all about Uruguay. Let me just give you a little bit of background. So this is Argentina. This is Argentina. And then this little spot right here, this is Uruguay. A lot of cattle, a lot of beef. Only nation in the world that you can just go buy weed. So they legalized that, and now they wonder why drug crime and drug criminals are getting a free pass. So right here, this is called Rio de la Plata, the Silver River, because the Spanish were looking for uh, silver and gold in here. But it's called the Paraná. That's its actual name. It's one of the great rivers of the world. They say the outputs like the Mississippi or in the flood season even more. So it's a phenomenal river. And just right across that estuary from Buenos Aires, the Paris of the Americas is Montevideo. You can't see it, it's over the horizon, but right here you can stand there and look across the estuary, and right here is the wreck of the Graf Spee. That's where World War II started in the Americas. So make no mistake, the rumblings of war are coming. Oh, by the way, Uruguay's power got blown out just a week ago by the famous Apagón. All of Argentina except the very, very south, parts of Brazil, all of Uruguay and uh, much of Paraguay. Paraguay, by the way, has been voting out their socialist presidents and going to more center-right candidates. They may be a little too cozied up to the Bush family, if you ask me, but at least they're getting rid of outright socialists. So this is happening in South America. Mr. Trump, we need to really support this. We need to help these nations to have law and order in their places. We need to help them put their own criminals behind bars. You know, uh, where, where's Barr? 
we already have the ability to go in with our federal authorities and uh, grab fugitives off the street of any country as part of U.S. law. If they're wanted, if they're convicted in absentia, hey, we can grab them. And we need to start doing that. This whole laissez-faire hands-off policy, this is detente, one of the three weapons with which Khrushchev said communism would conquer the Western world. Detente, decolonization, and disarmament. And now those weapons, weapons they are, are in play, in use, with criminals escaping like Rocco Morbido today. We need to nail these people to the wall, grab them, bring them to the U.S., and, and uh, hang them high, just like El Chapo. And of course, that's a civilized punishment, life in prison, but you know, for some of them that are traitors and that have brought communism and brought acts of war to their countries, uh, really the, the proper penalty for treason needs to be imposed, which is execution. I'm Pastor Sam, that's what's going on in the Americas, and it will affect you.